Hello everyone and welcome back. Dom here and on this video I'm going to share with you the ultimate tip for getting perfect mixes and produce with confidence every time in Cubase. I've been using this trick for years now since Cubase came out with Control Room and I've never gone back. And today I'm going to show you what it is. Let's get started. Right, so first let me show you a scenario that you might want to use this trick. Let's say I have this track that I want to master right here, so let's play it. Or maybe it's a track that I want to produce or I want to add some more elements to it. And let's say I want to start processing this track, but I also want to have the original version so I can see if I've improved or how it sounds compared to the original version. Maybe I want to have my reference track right here and maybe I want to, let's say, go back and forth with the reference. Maybe I want to go back and forth with a commercial track uh, or maybe with a client's mix or something like this. So most of the times what most people do is they go solo and they this is muted and then they go solo on this one. But this is, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a pain, especially when you have multiple tracks and you're producing, it's really hard to make sure that everything is soloed at the same time. But this solves the problem. So let me show you how it works. Let's say I have this one and I've done a very quick mastering right here. And now let me show you how I can go back and forth to the original mix very, very easily. Right, it's just one click away. Let me show you how I do this. All you need to do is go Studio, Audio Connections, or just press F4. And then the very first thing you need to make sure is that you go to Control Room tab, and then make sure that your Control Room is activated, like this. You need Control Room, so basically this will work with Cubase Pro, because that's the version that offers Control Room. Now, on your outputs, most of the times you will have a stereo output right there. So what you need to do is make sure that this is not connected because you don't want the stereo out to go to your speakers and then control room also goes to your speakers. You're going to get double the sound. So you make sure that your stereo out is there, but it's not connected. Now the next thing is go to control room and here's where you need to add your monitoring section and also your reference section. So let me remove everything and I'll do everything from scratch here so that you can see how we do it. So the first thing we need to do is add a monitor section. So as you can see, I have four monitors available. So this could be four pairs of speakers. In this case, you just need one. And the great thing with this trick is that it works even if you have an audio interface with a stereo output. So you don't have to have more physical outputs for this to work, that's the clever bit. So let's add a monitor output and let's call it monitors and there we go now here i want to add the stereo out of my audio interface so i can listen to my music so i go into my interface and then i add my analog outputs that go to my speakers now here's the clever bit what you need to do now in order to be able to go back and forth with a reference track is you need to go and add another channel this time it needs to be a q line Normally, cues are used to send musicians a different mix so that they can play more comfortably. For example, you might have a drummer and or, or a bass player and they only want to listen to the drums. They don't want um, the keyboards very loud, for example. That's why you need to use the cues most of the times. In this case, we're going to take advantage of these cues so that we can do our referencing. So I'm going to add a cue and I'm going to call it ref. And to be honest, that's it. You don't need to connect this queue to anything. We don't want it to go to a physical connection. We just want it to be there so we can go back and forth between the two mixes. So once we've done this, we're all good to go. Now, let me show you how you do this in Cubase. So let me remove this channel and let me show you how you can start setting it up. I always have this as a template in every project that I have. So what I do is I create an audio track stereo audio track and I call it ref, just like that. So there we go, now we have a reference channel 
that's where our reference mix will go, that's where our commercial track will go, and in this case I'm going to just drag this one up there so I can have another copy of it. Now what I want to do is go to the channel settings, so you just press E right there, and I want to make sure that this reference channel doesn't go to any output, it doesn't go to the stereo out, it goes to no bus. So I'm not sending it anywhere. But where I want to send it is to my Q send. And as you can see, the first Q is already there. Just activate it and then double click, set it to zero dB so I'm on unity gain. And just like that, we're ready to go. That's it, that's the setup. So once you've done all this, I would just save it as a template so it's already there and you don't have to do it over and over again. Now I can actually go and play my mix. Let me mute it for a second and you can see that this doesn't go anywhere, I can't hear it. See, it plays, but because they haven't connected it to a stereo bus, I can't hear anything. But I can hear my track that I'm about to master. So I, created a very quick mastering chain right there, so let's play it. And in this case I'm doing like a very simple mastering, I'm using the black box from Plugin Alliance to add a little bit of color, a little bit of depth, I love this plugin, it's the secret sauce for mixing and mastering. If you want me to do a video about this let me know in the comments down below, but at this stage I'm going to add a little bit of depth, let's do this. makes everything better. And then I'm going to use the 1973 from Arturia to add a little bit of EQing and a little bit of color. This is also a really nice sounding plugin. And last but not least, Pro L2 from FabFilter to get some loudness. Okay, so let's say I've done all this and now I want to check between this and the original mix. All I need to do is go to my control room mixer right here and as you can see I can see this by activating the right zone in Cubase and it's going to be under CR. And now I can actually go back and forth between my mix and my first cue, which is my reference mix. So let's do this. So without any interruption, without any clicks, without any pops, without any external connections, without a separate monitor controller, without any app inside Cubase, I can do this just by doing this very, very quick trick. And it works great in every circumstance, which means if I have a super big multi-track, I can still go like this and I can switch between the full multi-track and my reference track. And the other thing you can do is if you want to have multiple reference tracks, you can use the versions in Cubase. So I can create a new version and I can add like, let's say a commercial track. Maybe in this case, I would like to have like an 80s synthwave pop track to have as a reference. So I can switch between the two versions or three or four versions, it doesn't matter. And I can still go back and forth and it's very, very simple. Now, the last thing I want to show you is how to assign a key command to this because that's really, really simple and it actually makes a lot of sense if you have it assigned on a keyboard. So all you need to do is go to edit and then go key commands and then this window will pop up. All you need to do is type source and then search and then the second choice will be select control room source. So if you actually type select control room, it will show it straight away. Then all you need to do is type any key command that you want right here on this empty space and then click on assign. In this case, I have it set to the pulse key on my keyboard because I don't use the pulse key for anything else. So it's actually very simple. I can just go like this and just click the pulse key and I can go back and forth between the different mixes. And that's it, that's all you need to do to make this work. And once you've set it up, you don't need to set it up over and over again. Now, why is this trick so important? Because referencing is really important when you want to mix or produce in less than perfect circumstances. For example, sometimes I have to do a very quick mix on the train while I have a three hour trip, or maybe when I'm in a hotel room or in a crowded environment, 
I can just wear my headphones, good quality headphones, and cross-reference, and I can be very confident that the result will be okay, it will be good, you know. When I have nice monitors, I can still use that trick to go back and forth and get a little bit of vibe, you know, clear my ears a little bit so I can have something else to listen to very quickly, but I don't have to open, like, you know, maybe uh, Spotify or YouTube or something like this that don't have, you know, the best quality. Also, everything runs through my monitoring plugin, so through my analyzers, through my ARC, if I have a room a correction plugin right there. So give it a try, let me know what you think. I've been using this tip for years now in Cubase. I've kind of discovered this by accident, and I think it works great, and it gives you lots of confidence when you're mixing and producing. So there you go, guys. That's my ultimate tip when mixing, producing, doing sound design in Cubase. It's so easy to use and it always yields great results. If you like this kind of video, please let me know in the comments down below so I can make more of those because I have many tips I want to share with you guys when I'm mixing, producing. I use them every day when I'm working. So if you're interested, let me know. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, click the notification icon, the little bell right there, and until next time, have fun and make great music. Bye-bye.